more in our top line story. We're joined by Barry Schwartz, Chief Investment Officer and Portfolio Manager at Baskin Wells. It's great to see you. Thank you for having me. TSX suffering this year, hardly a surprise, I suppose. We've got so many banks, for example. It's two tough years in a row for the TSX. So last year, of course, outperformed the S&P and NASDAQ because of uh, you know the big drop in some of those technology names. But no one made money. This year, of course, if you don't own Shopify on the TSX in a, in, oh. a, in a nice percentage, you're not having a good year as well on Toronto stocks. So we'll talk about some ideas later about how mm -hmm. you can diversify your portfolio. But yeah, the earnings, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Rising interest rates are hurting a lot of these dividend paying companies. And uh, the growth just isn't there for a lot of the TSX big stocks. That's interesting. Shopify has such a big weight that you've got to be in there. Um, otherwise, you, you're, you're going to miss out. Well, 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 you look after you look at Shopify. You got the banks, you got the pipelines, you got the utilities, the insurance companies. It's just very, very tough for the TSX to outperform. Uh, so, I guess what we really need is interest rates to come down in a big, bad way without a recession. And that could be tough. That could be tough. Of course, they're not going to cut interest rates until there's a meaningful drop in the economy or there's a worry about employment. Uh, and uh, we don't see that yet. But of course, uh, the U.S. market and the Canadian markets, the economies are certainly diverging and, and it's uh, pretty evident. Yeah, that's the fascinating thing. I mean, the U.S. economy has been so strong despite expectations. The earning, well, Andy, you have to look at the makeup of the what's in the U.S. S&P 500, mm -hmm. 500 of some of the greatest companies in the world. You look at what's on the TSX, the top 50, the top 100. They're a blip on the S&P mm -hmm. 500 and not really well diversified as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the economy in this world is now technology, infotech, healthcare. These are not sectors that are really well represented on the TSX. Very narrow. And so people, when they're indexing, uh, you shouldn't buy the TSX index as something as to diversify your portfolio. Of course, one of the uh, worries here in Canada has been household debt. Uh, Canadians have increased their savings rates, though, on the bright side. The household debt number is the highest we've seen in many, many years. And of course, this is before a lot of those fixed mortgages come due. Uh, Many people took out low mortgages in 2020, 2021, and 2022 at 1%, 2%. Those are going to come due in 2025, 2026, and beyond if they don't cut rates at much higher interest rates. So this uh, chart that you're showing, the mortgage service costs are going to go exponentially higher as those fixed mortgages come due. Yeah, it's interesting. And the Bank of Canada, the latest uh, powerful government agency to say to the banks, you know, you're, you're giving people these amortizations um, with the variable mortgages, but they're not paying off the principal. And, you know, they're, they're kind of in this debt loop in that sense. Well, Canadians are very good at paying uh, off their mortgages. And uh, we're, we're very strong in about home ownership here, mm -hmm. something that you're in Europe, it's not. People yeah. don't own houses. So, and of course, the function of our mortgage market versus U.S., where people have locked in their mortgages for 30 years at extremely low rates, we just don't have that culture. We didn't have that foresight to create it. That saved us, of course, in the great financial crisis. Not so well now. So the only thing that's going to turn this ship around is a meaningful drop in interest rates. I think that's, Andy, unfortunately, or fortunately, that's going to start to happen in 2024.